The Lord be with you and welcome to our online service for what we're observing All Saints Day. Uh, we have much to remember today and much to be thankful for, most of all and chiefly the Lord's Word. Uh, we'll get to some more details in the prayer of the church there. I'll give you some more uh, and also afterwards with the announcements. But let us make our beginning in the one true name that calls us and, and has marked each of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the Festival of All Saints is from Revelation chapter 7. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worship God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called sons of God. 
Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from his Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Fellow baptized saints, Jesus is sitting on his mountain. Yep, you heard that right. He's doing it again. The Lord sat down on the top of Mount Sinai in fire to give his people the Old Testament. But here he sits in human flesh to give his people the new. And everything in the whole picture is repeated. The crowds below are the nations. The twelve disciples who come to him are his Israel. Moses gave commandments. This is how you keep the land I'm giving you. But Jesus gives beatitudes, blessings. The kingdom of heaven is yours. It's a better covenant, the author of the Hebrews says, because it's built on better promises. Not just, here's how not to lose the land, but the heavenly kingdom is yours forever. Not, here, do this, but, here, have this. Not just, this is yours for every generation, but this is yours forever, even unto the ages of ages. Instead of the Ten Commandments, there are eight Beatitudes, if you're counting. And then there's a ninth. The eight hang together as a unit. The first and the eighth, kind of like bookends there, promise the kingdom of heaven to the poor in spirit and the persecuted, respectively. And then that ninth one, which changes from they to you, with Jesus speaking directly to his disciples and to the overhearing crowds. There is no one outside Jesus' benediction. No one can say, well, that's not for me. It is for you. Blessed are you. Blessed are the poor in spirit. How fortunate, how lucky are those who are spiritually impoverished, who have nothing to offer God but their sinfulness and brokenness. They are most to be given to in the way of a little child. We are beggars all, Luther wrote on his deathbed, completely dependent upon God's grace. But those who are rich in spirit have no need for God. They are self-sufficient, content in their spirituality, whatever that may be. They already have their reward. But the poor in spirit know the emptiness, the restlessness, the deep darkness of the soul's night. They don't have their religious acts together. They're barely able to lift their eyes to heaven and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Like the tax collector in the synagogue, they go home justified. 
Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. How fortunate. How lucky are those who feel the deep pangs of death in the core of their being. Whose pillows are drenched with tears. Who weep even as the world laughs and parties. Those who mourn have nothing in this life that brings them joy. And so they live in hope. Weeping remains for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Those who mourn wait in the night, watching for the light of day. When grief is turned to joy and sadness to gladness, when God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Those who mourn are forward-looking, future-oriented, living in hope of seeing what is now believed. What about you? Are you mourning, grieving, feeling the absence of those you love who have been taken away by death? Blessed are you, for you will be comforted at the resurrection of Jesus. Those who are comfortable in this life, however, will mourn as everything is lost and taken away. But you, mourning now, will be comforted in Christ. Blessed are the meek. How fortunate, how lucky are those who are meek, even as the world admires the mighty. The meek cannot fight for themselves, much less claim for themselves a kingdom. For now, the earth is claimed by the strong, the aggressive, the warriors. Strong men lay hold of the kingdom with violence. Nations and peoples struggle for their peace of the earth. The meek by their time, waiting in silence, hoping and praying. In the end, the race doesn't go to the swift, but to the faithful. The spoils do not go to the mighty, but to the meek and the lowly, the lost and the dead. You may feel powerless at the moment, helpless against the forces that threaten you, but in the end, your faith in Jesus will be vindicated. It is the meek, not the mighty, who inherit the earth. For the king himself is meek and lowly. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. How fortunate, how lucky you are, who have no righteousness of your own. And if you learn anything from Moses and his mountain of commandments... It's this, you cannot gain righteousness by your works any more than your hunger and thirst can produce food and drink. The world feels that same hunger and thirst too and tries to fill it with the tasty delicacies of religion, spirituality, pleasure, money, sex, and power. But like Halloween candy, after the sugar rush wears off, there remains a nagging hunger and thirst. As a deer pants for streams of refreshing water, so my soul pants for you, O oh Lord. We are hungry until we feed on the bread of life. We are thirsty until we drink the wine of heaven. The hungry and thirsty are empty, waiting to be filled by a giver God who gives the bread of his body and the wine of his blood as food and drink. How fortunate. How lucky, how blessed to hear those words. Take and eat. My body given for you. Take and drink. My blood shed for you. A foretaste. A your first course of a feast to come. You shall be filled by the one who fills the hungry with good things. Blessed are the merciful. How fortunate, how lucky you are when you show mercy to others. You are a picture of grace, an icon of Christ for your neighbor. To have mercy is to live outside of yourself, to live in your neighbor by love, to be that Samaritan on the road to Jericho. Mercy is love to the loveless shown. 
in countless acts of kindness done simply because they needed to be done, not for reward or recognition. There is no noble prize for mercy because mercy happens hiddenly, quietly, without fanfare. But it is never forgotten by the merciful one who had mercy on us all by his dying and rising, you will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. How fortunate, how lucky you are to be pure hearted. Yet who can honestly claim such a thing? Our hearts are anything but pure, filled with murder, adultery, slander, gossip, thievery, lust, lies, and idolatry. How can we see God with such impure hearts? And here, in this sixth beatitude, we begin to catch a glimpse of something not so obvious at first. Jesus is speaking of himself, first of all. He alone is pure in heart, but he is there on his mountain as part of his work to make us pure in heart that we too might see God and to look at him in faith is to see God already. He is there to create a new heart and a new spirit within us, a kind of piggyback heart transplant of old and new, dying and living, sinful and righteous, beating together until that day that our old hearts stop their beating and die. And then at last, we too will be pure in heart as we are now in Jesus and in the purity of his heart, we will see God face to face. Blessed are the peacemakers. How fortunate, how lucky are those who step in the breach, who reconcile warring parties, and bring them together with an olive branch. They will be called sons of God. <laughs> what we expected in the sixth beatitude comes out in full force here in the seventh. Sons of God. Jesus, the Son of God, the one who makes peace, reconciling all things to his Father by his cross, the Prince of Peace, who brings a peace the world cannot bring. You are sons in the Son peacemakers in the Prince of Peace, bringing the message of reconciliation and peace to a world gone mad. God is reconciled with you, you say. He's at peace. Now you, be reconciled to God. How blessed, fortunate, lucky are those whose feet carry this gospel of peace, who speak a peace this world does not know and cannot have, Apart from Christ. Now I mentioned that the eighth beatitude ties back to that first one. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for the kingdom of heaven is yours. From this mountain, Jesus can already see the mountain of his cross, Calvary, where he was persecuted in order to fulfill all righteousness, that the kingdom of heaven may come to the earth. It is yours now by faith, but with persecutions. As Christ suffered, so also the members of his body will suffer. The first disciples there, they suffered at the hands of both church and state, persecuted by the government and by the religious leaders. Don't expect anything less in this great tribulation that we call life. To be in Christ is to be crucified with him. Yes, raised and glorified with him, sure. But first, crucified with him. Your sufferings for righteousness' sake are his suffering. This is why we rejoice in our sufferings. As Christ works in us endurance, character, and hope, and we recognize that these are simply the labor pains of a new creation being born. And they don't compare with the glory to come. There is hope for the future. Nothing short of the kingdom of heaven. 
And this is when your Jesus looks directly into your eyes. He directs the final blessing to you. This is for you. The words for you require all hearts to believe. Blessed are you. Fortunate, lucky. When others revile you, persecute you, slander you, and say all kinds of evil about you because of Jesus, rejoice. Be glad your reward is great in heaven. You're being honored in the way of the prophets who came before you. Today we celebrate the Feast of All Saints. It's the day we remember how Christ holds together his church by the confession of his saving name. Those that are in heaven and those on earth. We remember that we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, part of a great army. We're not alone in our faith in Christ, but are united with a multitude greater than anyone can number. We remember that this army, including those prophets who came before us, they cheer us on in our faith. Their song of triumph in heaven hits our ear here on earth, where the fight is fierce and hard, and it turns our eyes to the Lord who is in the midst of us, reminding us where he's leading us. This is why we remember the faithful departed on this day. They struggled here with us for a time, but now they rest from their labors, cheering us on and reminding us that we're still united to them in Christ. We are one in Christ. In Christ, the poor are rich in the kingdom of heaven. In Christ, the mourners are comforted. In Christ, the meek inherit the earth. In Christ, the hungry and thirsty are filled and satisfied. In Christ, the merciful receive mercy. In Christ, the pure in heart will see God. In Christ, the peacemakers are sons of God. In Christ, the persecuted receive the kingdom of God. Ever again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not strike them, or any scorching heat, for the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he is your shepherd. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, from yours. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. It's time for the prayer of the church. I'm going to include in our prayers, as I'm sure you heard, uh, Pastor Jan Pastuka, uh, Lutheran Church of the Redeemer, extended a call to Pastor Pastuka to come and be uh, her pastor. So we'll ask the Lord uh, to grant him what he needs for the consideration of that call. We're also going to be praying for Reverend Mao Saran. Now, Pastor Mao, you might wonder, who is that? That is a pastor of Dwang Kum Lutheran Church in Cambodia. And he's also on the board of directors. He's one of our Lutheran Church Canada missionaries. And so each uh, week we'll pray for one this week for for Pastor Sauron. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, faithful God, we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls and all things into your keeping, in your righteousness. Deliver us from all that would harm the body and all that would assault the soul. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Righteous God, bless all ministers of the gospel and the congregations committed to their care, that the comfort of Christ's sacrifice and the joy of his resurrection may be proclaimed to all who grieve their sin and mourn their dead. Grant clarity and wisdom to Pastor Pastuka as he considers the call to Lutheran Church of the Redeemer. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as your Son sent forth his church to make disciples in all nations, we lift up before you Reverend Saron, asking you to sustain him by your Spirit and bless his labors for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we know of your deep love for us, for you have called us your children. Deepen the love of children for their parents and parents for their children. Strengthen fathers and mothers in their vocations, that they may raise their children in the way that they should go. Hear the prayers of those who long for families and sustain all pregnant and expectant mothers and their little ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, bless all in authority over us, especially those who work to bring peace and justice, that they may be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. Grant wisdom to our citizens and courage and competence to our leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are our rock and fortress in our distress. Hear our prayers for those who are sick, suffering or recovering from illness or injury, especially Fran, Kathy, and all those we also name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who are nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, though death still claims our mortal bodies, you have raised up Christ that we may pass through death to our own joyful resurrection to the great reunion with those who have died in Christ and now rest from their labors. Receive our thanks for all the saints and for their witness, and hear us on behalf of those who mourn the loss of those they love. Bring us at last to the place of everlasting light and life, that we may see you face to face and live in your presence forevermore. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Well, God's peace, that blessing go with you. May you remember all those faithful departed, knowing for certain we are still one with them in Jesus. Um, take a look there at uh, the Redeemer reporter that uh, Jordan circulates for some more announcements. Um, but certainly keep your prayers flowing uh, on behalf of Pastor Jan Pastuka, uh, that the Lord would bring him to Lutheran Church of, of the Redeemer, as he has now called him, if that is, of course, his will. And we will wait on that and ask that he hear our plea, um, knowing that he knows best for what uh, the needs of Lutheran Church of the Redeemer are. So God be with you, and uh, we'll see you next week.